നമ്മളെല്ലാവരും അദ്ദേഹത്തെ കാണുന്നതും അദ്ദേഹം നമ്മളെ കാണുന്നതും നമ്മുടെ ഒരാളായിട്ടാണ് എന്നുള്ള നിലയിലാണ് അതുകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ ഈ സ്മാരക പ്രഭാഷണത്തിന് അതിൻ്റേതായിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു വൈകാരികതയും അതിൻ്റേതായിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു പ്രാഗൽഭ്യവും നമുക്ക് അനുഭവപ്പെടുന്നു ഈ ചടങ്ങിൻ്റെ ഭാഗമായി തന്നെ അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ മുഖ്യ പ്രഭാഷണം കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അച്യുതമേനോൻ ഫെലോഷിപ്പ് എന്നു പറയുന്ന ഒരു സംഗതി നമ്മൾ ഏർപ്പെടുത്തിയിട്ടുണ്ട് അതിനായി തിരഞ്ഞെടുത്ത വിദ്യാർത്ഥികൾ ഇവിടെ എത്തിയിട്ടുണ്ട് അത് അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ കൈകൊണ്ട് തന്നെ ഈ ഫെലോഷിപ്പ് വിതരണം ചെയ്യാനും നമ്മൾ അദ്ദേഹത്തെ ക്ഷണിക്കുന്നതായിരിക്കും ഞാൻ അദ്ദേഹത്തോട് ചോദിക്കുകയുണ്ടായി അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ പ്രഭാഷണം മലയാളത്തിലാണോ അതോ ഇംഗ്ലീഷിലാണോ എന്ന് ചോദിക്കുകയുണ്ടായി അപ്പോൾ അദ്ദേഹം പറഞ്ഞു അത് ഞാനും വളരെയധികം ശരിവയ്ക്കുന്നു ഇഫ് യു വാണ്ട് ടു സേ സംതിങ് സബ്സ്റ്റാൻഷ്യൽ ഐ ഹാവ് ടു യൂസ് അവർ വർക്കിംഗ് ലാംഗ്വേജ് ദാറ്റ്സ് ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് നോ വി വിൽ നോട്ട് സ്ട്രെയിൻ യു അവർ കമ്പെൽ യു ടു സ്പീക്ക് ഇൻ മലയാളം ആൻഡ് ഐ തിങ്ക് സംടൈംസ് പീപ്പിൾ ആർ ഏബിൾ ടു ട്രാൻസ്സെൻഡ് ലാംഗ്വേജ് ആൻഡ് ടു എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷ് എ റപ്പോ വിത്ത് ദോസ് ഹും ദേ ഹോൾഡ് ഇൻ ഹൈ എസ്റ്റീം ആൻഡ് ഐ തിങ്ക് മിസ്റ്റർ റായ് യു ആർ വൺ ഓഫ് ദോസ് വെരി റയർ പേഴ്സണാലിറ്റീസ് നോട്ട് ഓൺലി എ എ കമ്മിറ്റഡ് and hard working bureaucrat all these years and as a bureaucrat accountable to the political executive but no now you are functioning in your constitutional capacity as controller and auditor general of india where your masters are the people of india and you derive your power as you said rightly on several occasions from the constitution of india and i think despite the very many disappointments and tribulations i feel our political democracy is still institutionally strong if not strong enough because we still have constitutional statutory uh, institutions that are not directly accountable to the political executive which are elected from time to time i think we should also understand that political executive has its own role and then we have here sri kp rajendran they also perform a remarkable role because they are people who have to perform under a scanner 20 24 into 7 unlike uh, us who work in universities government offices where we are only accountable during our working time they are accountable for 24 hours of the day but having said that i think it is the checks and balances that keep the system going what uh, the famous uh, american economist coined the, the notion of countervailing power and he said that if you don't have countervailing power even if god comes to rule you you have to be careful because power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely and that's what political science teachers have been telling us so it's only in the fitness of things that in a modern democracy we have plurality of institutions and i want to share with you an anecdote of uh, our late president sri k r narayanan who before he became president right from the establishment of uh, the center for development studies because of his closeness with and friendship with professor k n raj he was an honorary fellow and whenever he used to come to kerala he used to visit the center and give us talk when he was an ambassador to china when he came on a visit to kerala we invited him to the center and he gave us a talk on a very interesting topic which i still remember called constitutional politics in communist china and then he said that if you measure china in terms of their performance in terms of equity in terms of leveling up the bottom they have done remarkable things which we could not do but you should also remember china is a one party uh, system in which the party is equated with the state constitutionally not by just politics only party and state are constitutionally equated so there is no real differentiation between party functionaries and state functionaries sometimes it's quite, it 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 collapses 
as we have now the new leader elected. He is the president or general secretary of the Communist Party of China, but he is also the president of the People's Republic of, of China. So there is a coalition. But he said there is a danger. At that time, I don't think he had Soviet Union in mind. He had any other country in mind. None of us had anything in mind. He said, if the center of power for any reason collapses, the entire system will collapse. And he said, in terms of United States, of course, we differ on a number of policy matters with the United States. And from a third world point of view, we have a lot of complaints. But if you look at within their own system, in their own point of view, it is a federal constitution. Powers are distributed between the states and the federal government. But not only that, they have independent constitutional functionaries, including the federal reserve system, which the president cannot control. It is the chairman of the federal reserve system who determines monetary policy. So he says, if Washington if the White House collapses, nothing will happen to the United States of America because the things will go on, states will continue, uh, they have their independent judiciary, they have an independent monetary system, therefore economic system will, will go on, and there's a whole range of powers distributed. So he said that, that kind of constitutionalism that we have to weigh these two, two you know, uh, extreme points. And if you don't learn from that, I think we will be in the danger. Because in our excitement, in our, uh, you know, uh, hurry to get to a more uh, egalitarian, socialistic society, which of course is much more difficult now than when he spoke in the late 70s, uh, we should, what he was saying that we should not undermine institutions which are of a countervailing nature. You may not like it. Their opinions, you may not, it may not be palatable to you because you hold certain other positions which come into conflict. But that should not come in the way. And that's one message that he was articulating to us young researchers. And I think it's, uh, I thought it's important to remember that because in his uh, capacity as the Comptroller and Auditor General of India, it's only he could come out with such facts, figures, arguments, and a perspective on how the government money, that is the public money, should be audited and whether it is, audit, uh, and whether it is spent in such a way that is consistent with the objectives for which it was allocated. And I think that's a very important function, just as the election commission, I think, uh, to a great extent evolved as an independent constitutional authority in our country, which, is, uh, which we take for granted, but um, I think you all realize most developing countries don't have that luxury. They just don't have that luxury of an independent election commission of the kind that we have. Under the United Nations, in their many uh, of the political, you know, post-civil uh, war situations, in Libya, in, in Sudan, in Somalia, in various places where they are now trying to set up the electoral system. They look, look up to India and they invite experts from our country who are experts in conducting elections, including when they conducted elections in South Africa after uh, President Mandela, uh, after Nelson Mandela was released and subsequently he became President Mandela. Uh, I'm just, I'm laboring the, all this uh, to underline the importance and the far-reaching uh, consequence in positive terms of the work that has been carried out during the term of Mr. Vinod Rai as Comptroller and Auditor General. I think that he has put a certain uh, sense of fear, certain sense of uh, caution in the functioning of the government, and which is, which is, which is very important. Of course, by legalistic and constitutional principles and office alone, we may not be able to solve all problems. Because there is a clamor now that if you have death penalty, then the rape will come down. I doubt very much. Uh, because there are issues, you may be seen as doing what Amartya Sen would call performing niti, but that may not be equivalent to naya. Naya is comprehensive justice, where everybody has to, you know, uh, ha should have a moral uh, <coughs> basis for their actions. Then only 
the naya will prevail in the society neeti can be operationalized through legal principles and through through legal constitutional mechanisms so it's it's very important when i say this i also remember um, our late uh, uh, chief minister as well as a political visionary uh, sri achyuta menon apart from his individual uh, uh, excellent uh, individual character and competence and brilliance as a student i think he was also a a, a forward looking visionary deeply committed to a certain kind of egalitarian social transformation in a in a country like ours and his field was uh, very much kerala although he played a national role through his own party and other fora but this is the field that he was mandated to operate and govern and i think the short span of time i still say short because compared to the a large and long period of time that we have gone through eight years or so as chief minister i think he brought about, brought about a paradigm change in the style of governance it is not only the precise things that he did one two three land reform distribution of kudugadapu land and you know public sector formations or church research and education and a whole range of things and nationalization of forests a whole range of things but that that is part and parcel of a larger paradigm of development that whatever is feasible within the system within the indian constitution and through peaceful means and through democratic means and that's the challenge because democratic uh, polity is a very difficult polity every decision has to be negotiated to arrive at unlike you are in a uh, in a one party or an authoritarian or a military dictatorship where the leader decides or a small group of people at the helm of affairs decide and then you can easily implement the thing you do not know whether people are happy with it or unhappy with it how you, how do you get a feedback that has been a problem and i think that's one of the lessons in history uh, is the fact that soviet union perhaps did not have that feedback mechanism in an effective manner despite doing great many things i think many of the poor many of the old aged in russia today uh, they are lamenting the fact that their standard of living has gone down considerably because they were taken care of in a very dignified and decent way for their existence so i think it's a very complex world that we are uh, living in and it's only appropriate that we have uh, mr uh, rai today to deliver the achyuta menon memorial lecture i would not like to stand between you and mr rai we are all uh, eager to listen to his lecture mr rai the floor is yours